Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, there's a playlist of our entire third season of LFF. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna be here and we're gonna be chatting about something large format. Today, I'm here in the lovely Park of Roses here in Columbus, Ohio, a northern suburb of Columbus called Clintonville. And this is a beautiful park. If you wanna walk your dog, play some sports, relax on a hammock. There's all sorts of activities you can do. I wanted to piggyback a little bit off of last week's video where we talked about color filters for black and white film into shooting one of my favorite film formats, which is black and white infrared film. This is a completely different type of film. A lot of the rules are the same, but the effect and the final result are something truly special. So stick around. We're gonna walk around. I'm gonna expose some infrared film and talk you through the process. I'm gonna go ahead and get my, uh, my gear set up right here. And I wanna do my warm up shot of this big old tree right here behind me. One of my favorite things to shoot with infrared film is foliage. Uh, something that reflects that infrared radiation that's coming in and the film records. Infrared, there's only one source of that that is gonna be strong enough for our film and that's what's coming from the sun. That's why you see me in this direct and dappled light. It's the only type of stuff we're gonna to need to make our exposures for infrared. So when I'm working with infrared film, there's two lenses I usually use uh, for capturing it, wide and ultra wide. That's about it, because a lot of the shots I want, I wanna get as much depth of field as possible, and uh, with infrared film, we lose speed very, very quickly. So now that we got the camera set up, I moved it in some shades so the camera's not, uh, not horrendously overexposed. But now that I've got everything set up, I wanna talk a little bit about what we're shooting today. We're shooting Efke IR820C, which is a black and white infrared film. Infrared film is one that's like a panchromatic emulsion. It can see all of the colors that we can see, but it's also sensitized with a very specific dye that allows us to dig a little bit deeper into the, the reds or the infrared spectrum. This is for wavelengths of light typically above 650 nanometers in wavelength. To show the film, only the infrared film and not the rest of the panchromatic spectrum, we have to specialty filter this film. That's why I'm doing this a week after we did our filters for black and white film. My favorite filter to use with this type of film is about as strong as you can get for this film, and that is an R72 filter. R72 is one that's going to knock about five stops of speed off of this film, and it is almost completely opaque. It is a very, very, very deep red filter. You can barely see through it. If you hold it up to your eye for long enough, it can adjust. If you do this, do not look directly into the sun. I don't want to be responsible for anybody uh, losing some vision or damaging their eyesight. Anyway, this filter is gonna help us block most of the panchromatic spectrum and allow just that little bit of infrared light that this film can see. If you were to use a filter that has a much higher nanometer cutoff, this film will see nothing because it's not sensitized to it. So when you're shooting infrared or near infrared films like Ilford SFX, Roly IR, FGE, or the legendary Kodak HIE or high speed infrared, you'll need to make sure the filters you're using are going to work well for that film. Otherwise, if you don't have an infrared filter, that red 25 that I used on last week's episode is gonna work great. I'm going to work on my composition while talking to you guys uh, about what I'm doing. So I have some really neat large, uh, large scale trees in front of me and I'm working in intentionally bright light. This is really harsh light that I wouldn't usually shoot in, but for me, this is perfect for infrared photography. Remember, we're working with a film uh, that needs heavy filtration. So that means we need a lot of light to make the exposure. I like working with wide angle lenses with this type of photography because I want I want to get as much depth of field uh, for my f-stop as possible. Wide angle lenses at the same aperture as a longer lens will always give you a little bit more depth of field. That's why my go-to lenses today are going to be my 150, which is like a 24 millimeter, and my 121, which is going to be like a 17 or 18 millimeter. And actually for this shot, the 150 isn't cutting it. This is a huge tree and I'm really close to it. So what I'm going to need to resort to is my 121. There we go, that's what we're looking for. Super duper wide. 
This lens just barely covers 8x10. It has like a few millimeters of, of rise and fall on it before it starts to go crazy. So in order to kind of cheat raising the tripod up further than I could, I can tilt this back and apply some front and back tilt uh, to get my standards matching. Okay, let's talk about one of the hardest parts to working with infrared film. That is metering. In Infrared films that saw really deep into the infrared spectrum, like Kodak high-speed infrared, they had a chart that said, if you're at this f-stop in this type of light, this is what your shutter speed should be. When you're working with near-infrared films like the f -key I'm using today, we can kind of go by some ballpark metering. In FKEY's data sheet for the IR820C, they recommend starting with a metering point of ISO 200 if you're going to treat it like a standard panchromatic film. Of course, we're not gonna be doing that. We're gonna be knocking it down with an R72 filter. And when I use an R72 filter, they recommend rating the film anywhere from ISO 6 to ISO 3. Yeah, single digit ISOs with these big slow cameras. This means I'm gonna have incredibly long exposures. To add to the challenge of that, I also need to watch out for horrendous reciprocity failure. So. I'm gonna meter at ISO 3 with this film, and I'm gonna to try to keep my metered exposure times below 30 seconds, uh, because anything over a second to about 30 seconds is my limit. If my metered time goes above 30 seconds, I could have the camera set up for as long as 20 minutes to an hour without getting the shot I'm looking for, and I don't wanna be here for that long. Oh, by the way, Matt from Raveni Labs managed to send me in a production copy of his new spot meter. He recently had an update on the project. So for those of you that kickstarted the project, those units should, the first of those units should start to go out in late August, uh, but stay tuned to the Kickstarter page. I'm gonna put a link in the description below for more updates on that product. This is gonna be my first use with it. So uh, what I, I really like it so far, all the things that I kind of had fault with it, with the, uh, the pre-production model, have been corrected, including this new updated battery door, uh, a more solid feel to the build, uh, and extra bits on the user interface. A full review is gonna be coming after I've had a few months with the meter. Okay, so we're going to turn her on. Okay, so I'm in zone system metering mode, and I'm just gonna be metering different parts of the tree up here. Um, and again, my ISO that I'm using is three. So I'm gonna take the tree bark, all right, so I'm gonna pick that, and that's a, that's not a zone five, that's more like a zone four. I'm gonna place that. And I am at a half second at F8, which turns into two seconds at 16. That sounds about right. I'm also gonna take the blue sky into account for this. So I'm going to measure this zone here, and I'm gonna place that on zone six. I've got a metered exposure time of four seconds. Four seconds doesn't sound like a lot, but with reciprocity failure through my R72 filter, that's a whopping 16 seconds. That's why I also don't care that I'm out here with all these people, because yeah, if they're walking by and they don't stand still, they're not gonna show up in the shot. So let's throw a filter on here and, uh, and do our warm-up shot. So I'm gonna insert my film holder, make sure everything is locked down nice and tight. All right, let's start that exposure. So I'm gonna cock the lens. Lens is cocked. Gonna remove our dark slide, make sure that filter's on there nice and tight. Move our dark slide. And we're gonna count off 16 seconds. There we go. Nice. that up, lock it down. All right, let's go to the next shot. Ooh, there we go. Again, the nice thing about working in a small park like this, not too far to go. Let's pick up the camera, walk a few feet, and you get something else. Really nice, right in front of you. All right. So the infrared or IR effect uh, that you see that happens a lot is just the result of direct versus indirect infrared light. The direct infrared light is going to reflect off of, uh, off of certain objects like foliage, human skin, that sort of thing, and it's gonna give this white almost glow to it. And any subject matter that receives indirect infrared light or just absorbs that infrared light, like, uh, like blacktop, 
bodies of water, the blue sky, those are gonna go a really deep dark color, almost pitch black. A lot of times what we see with infrared is that really intense effect uh, where we're getting a jet black sky or jet black water. I like to kind of work the more subtle range of that where you get some of the blue sky in there and it just goes a subtle gray instead of a deep dark color. Let's re-meter and see where we're at. So I'm in zone metering mode again, so I'm gonna place my tree bark here. I'm gonna place that at zone four. It's not quite middle gray, maybe even zone three, but I think four just to be safe. Place that. Yeah, so we're at, oh, actually, wait, no, I need F22. Yeah, there we go. So 10 seconds at F22. Uh, 10 seconds, that's, that means we're going to triple that time according to our reciprocity chart. That means we are down for 30 seconds of exposure at F22 with my FGE IR820C and the R72 filter. Okay. Insert our film holder. So nothing really different about the dance that we're doing today, just a few extra steps, but those extra steps are critical to getting the effect, the glow of infrared. So cock the shutter. Let's, let's remove our dark slide. All right. And we're gonna count it off. 29, 30. All right. If you don't listen for it, it sounds like a very little whisper, very faint. Okay. Okay, two sheets down. Let's go, uh, let's go hike around and see what else we can find to shoot with this lovely infrared film. Right. Uh, all right, I'm gonna take a little breather. Even though I haven't walked too far, it's been pretty, there's still a lot to hike around with. You know, right now is a good time to uh, give some special thanks to folks that made today's LFF happen. And that's right, I'm talking about you LFF sustaining members. Thank you so much for your continued support. Uh, the number of LFF members grows each and every week and it warms my heart to see that many people that, that are invested in, uh, in large format content and uh, just seeing the hobby continue and continue. We can only do that uh, by supporting one another, encouraging one another, and helping out those that are interested, that have questions. That's what this channel is entirely about. I wanted to create a resource that didn't really exist when I first started in large format photography. It's our job as folks that have been doing this a while to make sure it's easier and easier for future generations to get into this. That's the only way it's going to continue. With the LFF sustaining members, you guys and gals are who encourage me each and every week to get out there uh, and try some things and share everything I've learned over the years uh, with large format. So thank you. When I'm shooting infrared, the biggest thing I'm looking out for is I want some direct light coming in. So I want there to be a little bit of harshness in the scene. Uh, I don't want it to be overly diffuse and I don't want it to be super hard where that's the only source. I want there to be a little bit of a mixture because I think that's when you can start to mix uh, the extreme effect of infrared with some of those more subtle bits. Uh, and this scene right here is kind of, kind of right up my alley. Now, ideally I'd like a little bit more blue sky to be showing, but the clouds just kind of rolled in. I'm gonna deal with it. I think I'm still gonna get a lot of the desired effect, a lot of glow off the trees, as long as I have some direct sun hitting that, uh, and some of those diffuse shadows doing some more interesting things than I could get with a panchromatic film. Okay. All right, let's put the bag down. Ooh. So everything looks good and focused on the ground glass here, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily gonna be in the right focus that I'm gonna need for my shot. You see, that difference in wavelength of infrared light will also impact our focus ever so slightly. If I had my lens set to exactly infinity focus at a very wide open aperture, it may not be tack sharp all across the frame. Uh, it might actually be slightly in front of where it needs to be focus wise. So to compensate for that, when I'm focusing with my, uh, my ultra wide angle lenses on here, once I find where my focus is, uh, where I like it, I do like a quarter twist of the knob, and that's usually good enough to compensate for that level of focus. So let's get our metering going. Check that. Okay. 
Okay. Insert the film. This looks good. Oh, there it goes again. This is a film I'm willing to be very patient for. It's now or never. You know, when you get it right, the look that you can get from an infrared film is truly ethereal. It's something that our eyes aren't capable of naturally seeing, seeing, and even when you've shot enough of this film, there's still a little bit of that extra chance. Did I get it? Was the exposure enough? Was the development right? So I think another reason that I like infrared films secretly is that it makes me feel all of those beginner feelings with large format. Again, those butterflies in the stomach. Oh my gosh, is it gonna come out? And when it does, it's just something that I never anticipated. And even after all these years of working with this Efke IR in eight by 10, the limited supply I have, I'm still pleasantly surprised when I pull that sheet out of the, uh, the stainless steel hanger and tank and I say, yes, this time I got it and it looks great. On with the pack, and we're on to our next spot. Let's hike along the trail a little bit more. The light is really starting to go down. Uh, I've only got probably another hour of direct sunlight, so uh, let's take advantage of it and get some real infrared shots. All right, there's a ton of poison oak and poison ivy back in here, so I'm gonna try to not get rashed to death, but man, I love this tree. I have got to get this shot. For this one, I am gonna switch out to my 150 uh, because I don't think I need the 121 to say what I want to say and just showing the shape of this tree. Uh, I love the down vines on it and just the contrast between the bark and the background. I think this is gonna be our infrared shot for the day. We need to undo all of our movements that we applied up until now because we're not going to need them. It's going to be a relatively straight on shot. All right, get our standards all squared. 21, 21, that's good. And I'm not going to chance it. I'm not going to set anything down. All the stuff I need to make my exposure is right in here. Let's see, yes. Okay, that looks good. We're gonna meter this out. Our metered exposure is really, really deep now. We're getting into the slow stuff. We are going to need 30 more seconds uh, to get the shot we're looking for. One kind of tricky thing about my super wide angle here is this has a monster 95 millimeter front thread. I don't have a 95 in my R72, but I do have a 77. The back threading, like I mentioned in last week's episode, the back threading of this does allow for a larger filter. And I have a stepping ring to go from 62 to 77 millimeters, and that's gonna allow me to put my infrared filter on the rear. The downside there, you gotta remember it's there for the next time, and you'll be able to tell because you won't be able to see through it. So I'm gonna pop that on there. So, F16, 30 seconds, that's with my reciprocity failure and my ISO3 metered exposure. Okay, get my last film holder out here. Great, little wind's not gonna kill me. It's not gonna affect the main shot we're going for. So. 30 seconds, let's go. 29 and 30. Yes, I 
I think we really got something there. So I'm here at 400 West Rich. I just grabbed my negatives and sleeved those up. And before I get those home and scan them up, I kind of wanted to recap uh, what we had to go through to get some infrared film uh, exposed and developed. We have an expired film that's at least, let's see, this stuff is at least 14 years expired. It's no longer made new. It needs specialty filtration. It needs specialty treatment when metering and exposing. It has horrendous reciprocity failure and it needs a pretty aggressive developer to kind of eke that little bit out of, uh, out of the now foggy film. So there's a lot of hurdles to getting some decent looking pictures with infrared film. My best recommendation, if you already have some infrared film, shoot it as soon as possible. The film is not getting any younger and neither are you, so you might as well go out and shoot it. If you're trying to save it and save it and save it, each year that passes, even if you have it in proper cold storage, the results are going to get diminishing returns, worse and worse and worse over the years. So get using this stuff as quickly as possible. If you have any questions about working with large format infrared film, let me know down below in the comments. And if you have any long form questions, you can always feel free to shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by and we'll catch you next week for more LFF.